so many scroll saw blades, it's overwhelming. Now we know that the lower the number, the smaller the blade. So a zero or two would be used for cutting really thin boards. And then the bigger the number, you can cut thicker boards with it. But what do we do about all the variations of blades? So today we're going to do a shootout of all the different ones that I could easily get a hold of and see what works best. These are the different types of blades that we're going to be testing out today. And I picked these because of the most commonly available ones and most likely the ones that you're going to be using. Now for this test, I try to do it so it's the same size. So I'm using a number five because that's the most common size that I use for my projects. There were a couple types of blades that I was not able to get a number five easily. So I dropped down a size for those. I'm going to cut the same pattern for each blade. So I made a template that incorporates the most typical type of scroll sawing that we would do. So it has some straight lines, it has some right corners, it has some internal curves, some external curves, and then some cool shapes on the inside. And I think by doing this, we're going to be able to test these blades in the most applicable way possible. Not only am I going to cut out the same pattern, but I'm going to do it in three different types of materials. We're going to use wood, we're going to use plywood, and we're going to be using acrylic. Let me start off by saying this is going to be a completely subjective test. It's difficult to make a scientific evaluation from blades blade to blade when there are just so many variables. It all depends on the pattern I'm cutting out, the materials that I'm using, and my ability to use my scroll saw. So don't take it as a personal front if I find a blade that just doesn't work for me, but it works for you. Hey, you do you, and if you find something that works great for you, roll with it. But I might find a blade that works really well for our test and you've never used it before and maybe that will inspire you to pick one up and try it out for your next project. We're going to do wood for our first test. So I milled down a piece of poplar to about a quarter inch thick. I'm going to apply my templates and then we're going to test out each blade, see how it does. I cut off my boards and laid them out in order of how they performed. Now there's a couple things I looked at. I looked at the quality of the cut. How easy was it for me to be able to stay on my line? How easy was it just to simply cut it? I know that's kind of subjective. And then also the backside, how much tear out there was, you know, how clean it is on the front and the back. This is what I came up with. From best to worst, we have the Precision Ground Tooth Blade. Now this is the Precision Ground Tooth Double Skip Reverse Blah 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 Blade, super mouthful, but it performed the best overall as far as the quality of the cut, the tear out on the back side. Then we go to the reverse skip tooth blade, the double tooth, the modified geometry, the skip tooth, the double reverse skip tooth, and then the spiral. Here are my observations. The precision ground blade has a really good cut and it had just a tiny bit of fraying on the back side, but much, much better compared to all of the rest. So overall, really good blade. I was able to cut fast with it. I got a good quality cut, not a whole lot of cleanup on the backside. It's just an excellent blade to use. The reverse skip tooth blade is usually my go-to. This is the blade that I use for all of my projects. I find it to be a good all-purpose blade. And well, I think it kind of stood up with that. It had just as good of a quality cut as the precision ground blade. Really easy to use, cut super fast. The difference is that there was a little bit more fraying on the backside than the precision ground, so a little bit more cleanup has to get done. If you took that out, these two would look pretty identical. The shocker for me was the double tooth blade. So this does not have a reverse tooth. It had a crisp cut. The cleanness of this cut is absolutely phenomenal compared to the other ones. Shiny on the outside, on the, especially on those curves, on the flat part here, that did not happen with all the rest. This board seems to be a little bit rough. So, you know, it's not a forgiving board. And the fact that this one has such glossy edges on it and none of the others did just tells you this was an excellent blade to use. I am shocked by it. Now the downside of this, super slow. The slowest just about out of all of them, except for the spiral blade, really, really slow blade. So you got to take your time. Since it's not a reverse tooth blade, there is some clean out that has to be done. So it probably ranks closer to the backside as far as the cleanup goes. However, the quality of cut was better than even the precision ground. So where do you put it at? It could easily fall to number one if slow and steady wins the race. You don't mind the cleanup. If you want to work at a, a fairly fast pace, then, well, this might get pushed down a little bit further. But shocked, really good blade. The modified geometry blade was pretty good. Uh, I would say it falls in the middle of the pack. The quality of the cut was 
pretty average. I would say that it is not as good as a reverse skip tooth blade, but the cleanup on the backside is comparable. So I would put it right here. These two would be neck and neck, really close, but man, the quality of this double tooth blade just has to put it a little bit higher. Next is a skip tooth blade, had a comparable quality to the modified geometry blade, especially on the inside. Good smooth curve there. The downside of it is that there was a little bit more cleanup work to do on the backside, especially the lightning bolt zigzag here. Quite a bit of fraying that would have to get worked out. You can see it on the inside of the spiral here. So cut quality is about the same. However, more cleanup. The blade that surprised me the most was this, the double reverse skip tooth blade. I expected this blade to perform way better than what it did. The quality of the cut is pretty rough. It's admittedly worse than all the rest of them. Unlike the double tooth here that has a really good quality cut, but you know, has a couple downsides. This just wasn't a super smooth cut, especially on the inside face here. Since that curves are a little bit rough and it still had the tear out on the backside, which it shouldn't really have. Now, one thing I did notice with this is when I took it out of the pack, I looked at it. It's a brand new pack that I just bought, looked at it. I didn't see any teeth that were actually reversed on it compared to the other reverse tooth blades where they were noticeable. So I found that a little bit weird. However, I'm gonna go with what the pack says because I bought it from a reputable dealer and it was brand new still in the package. So I'm a little bit disappointed by this blade. Actually, I'm a lot disappointed by this blade. I expected better. The worst blade, the spiral blade. This was absolutely miserable. I will admit that this is probably not the best test for the spiral blade because each blade kind of has its niche and maybe some of these cuts were not for this. But I did not find this blade enjoyable whatsoever. Straight cuts were really difficult. The curves are really difficult. It has the roughest cut. It has a lot of tear out on the backside. And you know, the, the plus side of spiral blades is that they cut on all angles, all directions. So you would think that in making the zigzag cut here, it would be great because then I could just move the piece around and not have to do a lot of spinning. However, the curve of this blade is actually wide and it's a little bit wider than the curves of the other blades. So whenever I got to the corners, I ended up getting rounded over corners and not able to get those crisp corners that I was able to get with some of the other blades. So even the plus side of the spiral blade ended up being a detriment for this particular one. Now, the reason why I was hoping it would do a little bit better is because it is the most talked about blade as far as questions to me in my videos or social media. Whenever I post anything involving scroll saw, somebody will send me a message and say, have you ever used a spiral blade? However, they don't actually provide their feedback on it or if they like it, they just ask me if I've ever used one. And I have, but I find that the best use for one is when you have a little, little cut or something like that, you need to put it in there and just kind of do a little, little shimmy to carve out a little area. That works best for a spiral. Any other shapes I find to be absolutely miserable. And this, uh, this is absolute garbage. There is one piece that is missing from this, and it's the wild card, but it is the crown tooth blade. Now, I say this is the wild card because I could not find a number five. It was not available. I looked at the Olsen website, and they don't have a number four. So I had to go down to a number three. So you can take that. Some people may say it's not a fair comparison. If all of these are fives, the spiral is a four, the rest of them were fives. This being a three, some people may say that's not a fair comparison. So I totally understand. That's why I say this is a wild card. But this is a crown tooth blade. I've never used one before. My gosh, this was phenomenal. And it was better than everything else, bar none in every category. The cleanness of the cut was better than even the double tooth blade. Every aspect of this cut is smooth. The inside curves, the outside curves a glossy finish on all of the cuts, even though all these are the same board and there's plenty of them that are rough edges. This one all around super smooth. Also, I look at this, this is the back side, and it looks better than the front side of some of these. There's no cleanup work to do. So not only did this have the best cut, it has the most crisp edges on the front and the back. It's not even comparable the best one. 
Let's conduct the same test now using plywood. So we're gonna use the same blades. This plywood is the same thickness as our solid wood board, which is a quarter inch thick. Let's see how they do. Here are all of our test boards, and this was interesting. A lot closer results than using the solid wood boards. So from best to worst, we have the reverse skip tooth blade, all the way down to, surprise, surprise, the spiral blade. So let's look at each one and see kind of how they did. The reverse tooth blade performed magnificent. Super smooth cuts all the way around. Barely any sort of fraying on the backside of it. It was just fantastic. And it performed a lot better than on the solid wood board. And that's saying a lot because this, I think, ranked about three or so on the solid wood board. So for it to be still number one on the plywood, I think says a whole lot. The next four are super close and I can absolutely see somebody switching these orders around. I went with the modified geometry blade for number two. The cut was really smooth. It's pretty much as smooth as the reverse tooth blade. The difference is that there was some more fraying on the backside, a little bit more cleanup work. But when I look at the fraying, I see that this is easily fixable. A little sandpaper will knock off these fuzzies. There was no damage to the plywood veneer on the back side compared to some of the other ones, which you'll definitely see. Number three was the double reverse skip tooth blade. So this made up for itself. This was a super poor showing on the wood board, but with plywood, it performed much better. A smoother cut, so a good quality cut. I would say that it's comparable to the modified geometry blade, even a couple of the other ones down here. Uh, the, the cut quality was about the same. As far as the tear out goes on the back, it's a little bit worse than the modified geometry one. Still pretty good though. I only see a couple little tiny spots where the veneer was chipped off where it was not salvageable, but all the rest of this is just little fuzzies that can be knocked off with some sandpaper. Next is the crown tooth blade. And I don't really know what to say about this one. Okay, it has the smoothest cut out of all of them, just like with the wood one. And there's no fraying or tear out at all. So it has the cleanest cut out of all of these. The problem that I had was it didn't want to cut this board. I couldn't get a straight of a cut. Even whenever I did curves, when I did the zigzag, it just kept wanting to veer off because it felt like I was cutting with a super dull blade, even though it was a brand new blade. It was unbearably slow. I don't know if it's the density of the plywood with all the layers. Again, we had taken account this is a number three. If I was using a number five crown tooth blade, the results might be different. So this one's tough because this could easily be number one if I was able to cut my line straight. But I could also see it being dead last if somebody says, hey, if I can't cut a straight line, I can't use this. So I totally understand both ways. I put it here in the middle. If you were to take this out, you have the precision ground blade and then the double reverse skip tooth blade. These two are almost identical. They really are. The difference that I saw was the tear out on the back side of the precision ground tooth blade was deeper. So it wasn't just a couple little fuzzies that get knocked off. There were a couple spots where the plywood just chipped a little bit too much. And if this was a show side, I would have a problem with it. I did not want to see some of those. Those are areas that you can't sand and clean it up because if you sand it to fix it, you would actually sand through the veneer. The cut quality was exactly the same, a little bit more tear out on this. So I definitely would put the double reverse skip tooth ahead of it. It's where do you wanna put the crown tooth at? This whole thing is subjective anyway. Next is a skip tooth blade. I would say that overall it performed okay. The cut quality is smooth, maybe not as glossy smooth as some of the other ones, but still a good cut, stayed on the lines just fine. Curves were just fine too. So it was able to cut really fast through it as well. The downside was the tear out on the backside, which I kind of expected. There's a couple spots here that are super deep gouges in it that I would definitely not have this as a show side in any way at all. Take a little bit of cleanup work. So some of these are some really big frayed split ends on this plywood. So that's got to go further back. Next to the last was the double tooth blade. So this one, I was, I was interested to see how it performs because this is the one that surprised me with the solid wood blade because it had such a clean cut. And it is, it's a smooth cut still. 
The cut quality, I would say, is a little bit better than a couple of these other ones. So it still does a really good job as far as that goes. The tear out is horrendous, absolutely horrendous. Deep, deep gouges in that plywood veneer. Plywood veneer just wasn't able to hold up. I didn't say this before, but this is good quality plywood. We're using Baltic birch plywood with really thick outside veneers. So when you still have the chip out that I have on the back side, this one's a no-go. And dead last is the spiral blade. Even if you are a spiral blade savant and you can get perfectly straight cuts with a blade that's really hard to do, this has so much tear out on this plywood that it's just not usable. We're talking about deep gouges, splintering, every, every part of these cuts are frayed all the way around it, all the inside, and it's nothing that can get cleaned up. So even if your cuts are perfectly straight, it chews up that backside veneer to the point where it's just not even usable. Our final test is to cut out acrylic. Now I will admit I've never cut acrylic on a scroll saw before, so I did not know what to expect. So no preconceived notions going in and there were definitely some surprises for me. These may be a little bit hard to see, so I apologize, but ranking them in order from best to worst, we have the double tooth blade and then worst would be the spiral blade. The majority of these blades, you can't really tell a difference. So being number four or five compared to being number one or two, not really a big deal. But let's start with number one, which is the double tooth blade. It had the cleanest cut by far compared to all the rest of them. Uh, I was not surprised at the cleanest of the cut because it, had, it was a clean cut on the wood and the plywood also. What I was surprised about was the lack of any sort of tear out or anything on the back. Now with this, this acrylic, it had a plastic film on the front and the back. So I cut it with that film, peeled the film off, that should help with any of the fraying along the edges, but you'll see some of them still have that. The double tooth blade though, didn't. And uh, that is something that was vastly different than the other tests with this blade. It cut really well, cut really smooth too. And that, again, that's something that the other blades didn't necessarily do. Number two was the skip tooth blade. So this was a redeeming blade because if you remember the wood and the plywood, it was kind of towards the last, but in this test, it's actually number two. It had a really good cut. It had a better cut than a lot of the other ones did. Minimal tear out at all around the edges. The only thing that I had a problem with this one was is it wanted to chatter a bit whenever I cut. So it didn't matter how fast I pushed it or the speed of the saw. It wanted to jump around just a bit. Once you kind of get used to that though, wasn't really a big deal. That's number two. Next is the modified geometry blade. This was a fast one. Just like whenever I did the wood and the plywood, it just wants to cut fast. The same thing with the acrylic. The cut was not as good of a quality as these other two. You can see that there is a step down with this and there is some chipping on the inside edges of these interior cuts like the swirl and the zigzag there. So it is definitely not in the category of these top two, but still, did a really good job. Number four is the precision ground tooth blade, really similar to the modified geometry, actually kind of similar to these other ones over here too. Very little difference between these. The cut quality was really good. It is a smooth cut, maybe a tad smoother than the geometry one, but it had more tear out on the back side of this one than the geometry one did and it was too much to make up for the difference in the quality of the cut. So I put that at number four. Number five was the double reverse skip tooth blade. Now this one has a much rougher cut than these other couple here, but what was really in favor of this blade was how smooth it cut. There was no chattering with this. There was a little bit with the precision ground. There definitely was some with the skip tooth. The double tooth, and the modified geometry were fairly smooth. This one was like butter cutting through it. So I it's kind of expected to have a smoother cut based off how it was cutting, but the cut is just a tad rough. There are some tear out uh, in the, on the back side, especially in the zigzag, there's some chip out there. So because of the quality of the cut, some of this tear out, I have to move it further back on the list. But as I was using it, I thought this was going to be way up higher because it cut like a dream on acrylic. A complete fall from grace is the reversed 
skip tooth blade. This one has been towards the top on all of our tests except for acrylic. The cut quality itself was about the same as the double skip tooth right here. So about the same that way. Needs a little bit of cleanup work. What really hurt this one was it wanted to bounce all over the place as I was cutting. It was a lot of chatter, probably the most chatter out of all of them. And I think that did have an impact on some of these cut qualities here. It's kind of hard to get a really good smooth spiral when your piece wants to chatter around a bit. And it didn't matter how fast I moved it, how fast or slow the saw was. It just wanted to bounce around a lot. So it ends up getting dropped down. Next to last is the surprising one to me, which is the crown tooth blade. Now this one has been towards the top of the list, even with the plywood test where we said it was in the middle, but it had the smoothest cut. It just didn't have the straightest cut. Well, in this case, it's neither. It is a rough cut, so it's not really super smooth. It's also rough, especially this bottom part. It just feels jagged. And what I noticed is on the inside parts here, it wasn't just that there was some frayed edges. There is some spots kind of in the middle. So not on the edge, not on the, this face or this face, but actually in the middle of that cut, there are some fraying in there, which I did not expect. She so had to take like a, a knife or something and kind of try to clean all that out and get all that gunk out of there. So I was surprised and disappointed that this one performed so poorly. As far as cutting though, I mean, it cut smooth, but it just didn't do a very good job. And then we have the spiral blade again towards the last. Uh, this was horrendous. Uh, wow. Don't use a spiral blade on acrylic unless you have a really specific purpose for it because yikes. Before we get into the final results, a couple house cleaning points. This is completely subjective. It is based off me cutting out this particular pattern on my particular saw on this particular day and me interpreting the data the way that I interpret it. So you might do this exact test with these same blades and come up with a different result. And hey, I highly recommend it. Get a bunch of blades, try them out, see what works best for you. I also admit I did not use the exact same brand blade all the way through. I went with the blades that people are gonna probably find. And Pegas and Olsen, are comparable. Those are the typically the blades that people go for. So whenever I did an online search for different types of blades, I went with the ones that easily came up. So if I had to do a whole lot of hunting for it, I didn't test it. I obviously did not test every sort of blade out there because there's a billion. So maybe I'll do a follow-up video later on that goes over some of those ones that we skipped out on. Now the final results based off of our completely made up set of rules. The best overall blade was a tie between the reverse skip tooth blades and the modified geometry blade. Those came in neck and neck. Now, if you're looking for the best overall general purpose blade, it seemed like the modified geometry blade performed the best. It was not the most bestest in any category. It was not the most worstest in any category. Kind of fell in between. The reverse skip tooth blade would have been higher, but the acrylic test it did really poorly on knocked it down. Otherwise, it would have been a blowout. Next was the precision ground tooth blade. Now there's a whole lot of subcategories to that. You can get all sorts of types of that. So that's a whole rabbit hole. So based off just the one that I tested in my setting here, it came in number two. Number three was a tie between the crown tooth blade and the double tooth blade, which kind of makes sense. Both blades have teeth that are really close together. They're both really slow cutting blades and they're both made to get a clean cut. So I totally get it. And then to round it out, we have the skip tooth blade, the double reverse skip tooth blade, and then last was the spiral blade. Now there's a purpose for all of these blades. So even the ones like the spiral blade that came in last, there's definitely a specific purpose or that blade will perform great. You just gotta find out what that purpose is and does it is it the project that you're working on. My biggest takeaway is that I have been using the reverse skip tooth blade and I'm glad that I am. And I'm gonna keep using that blade because it performed pretty well. But I'm also gonna go find a number five crown tooth blade. And I'm interested to see how that does. And maybe I'll use that for a while on a couple of my future projects and see, do I like using that one better than using the reverse skip tooth blade? Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If I earned it, then perhaps hit that subscribe button and check out some of the skull saw projects I have. I also have my main channel, Newton Makes. You can head on over there. I've got a ton of videos on all kinds of woodworking projects that you might enjoy. So until we meet again, get in your shop and build something awesome.